The chain rule is a really useful rule for finding the derivative of the composition of two functions. Let's start with a brief review of composition. f composed with g means we apply f to the output of g. As a diagram, this means we start with x and apply g first. I'll call its output u and then we apply f to that output. We'll call f the outer function and g the inner function since g looks like it's inside of f in this notation. We can write h of x, the square root of sine x, as a composition of two functions by first applying sine x and then applying the square root function. So the square root of u is the outer function and sine of x is the inner function. Please try writing the following two functions as compositions before you go on with the rest of the video. A natural way to write k of x as a composition is to recognize this block right here as our inner function. And what we do to that block, cubing it and multiplying by 5, is our outer function. There are sometimes several different ways of writing a function as a composition of two functions. And you may have written r of x as x squared followed by e to the sine u. Or you might have written it as sine of x squared followed by e to the u. Or you might have written it as the composition of three functions, x squared followed by sine, followed by e to the power. When taking the derivatives of complicated functions, it's really important to be able to recognize them as the composition of other functions, because the, then the chain rule, which we're about to see, will tell us what to do. The chain rule tells us that if we have two differentiable functions, then the derivative of the composition, f composed with g, is equal to f prime evaluated at g of x times g prime of x. If we write this as a diagram, as we have been doing, then to take the derivative of the composition, we take the derivative of the inner function and multiply it by the derivative of the outer function evaluated at u. Remember that u here is the same as g of x. You may sometimes see the chain rule written in Leibniz notation, that is the dy dx notation. Let's let u represent g of x as before, and let me let y be f of u. In other words, f of g of x. I'll, let me write down my chain rule just as we had it before first. And now let me just rewrite it a little bit using a u for g of x. Now the left side in Leibniz notation is the derivative of y with respect to x. f prime of u is the derivative of y with respect to u. And g prime of x is the derivative of u with respect to x. So I have another form of the chain rule. Both of these forms you'll see frequently in the examples to follow. For our first example, let's take the derivative of the square root of sine of x, which we had represented as a composition of sine of x and the square root function. The chain rule tells us that to take the derivative of h, we need to take the derivative of the inner function, sine x, and multiply it by the derivative of the outer function evaluated at u, or sine x. Now the derivative of sine x is just cosine of x, and I can take the derivative of the square root of u by rewriting it as u to the 1 half and using the power rule. 
So that's one half u to the minus one half. Now u is just sine x, so I can rewrite this as sine x to the minus one half. And cleaning this up a little bit, I get cosine of x over two times the square root of sine x as my derivative. For the next example, which I diagrammed earlier as an inner function of tan x plus secant x, followed by the outer function of 5u cubed. The derivative of tan x plus secant x is secant squared x plus secant x tangent x. And the derivative of 5u cubed is 15u squared. So k prime of x is the product of these two expressions. Since u is tan x plus secant x, I can write this as 15 times tan x plus secant x squared. I could multiply that out and try to simplify a little, but I think I'll just leave this as is. In this next example, I can write my function as a composition of three functions and take the derivative of each one. Derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of sine u is cosine u. And the derivative of e to the v is just e to the v. So my derivative of the function is the product of these three things. And I need to turn everything back into x's. So u is x squared. And v is sine of u. Still one more step to get back to x's. This is e to the sine of x squared, and that is my derivative. I personally think that when you're getting started using the chain rule, it can be very helpful to write out a diagram like this. It helps keep things organized, especially when you're dealing with compositions of three or more functions. But as you get more experience doing the chain rule, you may want to apply it more efficiently without drawing out this diagram. And let me show you this, with this example how I could work through the chain rule a little bit faster. So recall my original function r of x was e to the sine of x squared. And I want to find its derivative. I think I'm going to try color coding this to remind me what the inner and outer functions are. So the outermost function is e to the power. And then the next innermost function is sine of its argument. And the innermost function is x squared. So to find the derivative of r, I need to start by taking the derivative of the outermost function. So that's e to the power. And its derivative is just e to the power. I'll evaluate that on its inner function, sine of x squared. And then I need to multiply that by the derivative of its inner function sine of x squared. The derivative of a sine is cosine of its inner function. And then I need to multiply that by the derivative of its inner function. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And I've talked my way through to an answer that's exactly the same as my previous answer, just written in a different order. This video introduced the chain rule, which says that the derivative of f composed with g at x is equal to f prime at g of x times g prime at x. Or equivalently, dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx.